Hi everyone, Megan here. Today I'm going to be doing a video all about my favorite Victorian author, Elizabeth Gaskell. Elizabeth Gaskell is also one of my favorite authors in general, and I love to talk about her and I love all her books. So today I am going to be ranking Elizabeth Gaskell's novels. This will be a spoiler-free ranking, and this will not include novellas such as Cranford and Cousin Phyllis. It will not include The Moorland Cottage or The Cage at Cranford. It will not include any of the gothic tales either. These are just her main five novels. Well, her only five novels. <laughs> so, um, and also I wanted to say that I love all five of these novels. So even when I'm saying this is my least favorite Elizabeth Gaskell novel, it's still a novel that I really love. So without further ado, here is my ranking. Number five, Ruth. Ruth is the story of the fallen woman. The fallen woman meaning she had sex outside of marriage and in this case fathered, fathered a child. Fathered a child. She mothered a child. <laughs> now this novel, this novel is filled with understanding for the fallen woman and for hope for the fallen woman. So that is something that I really do appreciate about this. Um, now this novel is a little bit slower. Um, at times it did feel a little bit claustrophobic to me. Um, sometimes novels set in one place or when the character is really confined make me feel that way and I'm like, ah, oh, I need to get out more, I need some more movement in this novel. Um, and the other thing about this is that Ruth, ha and this is understanding of, of where Elizabeth Gaskell is coming from, that, that she would give this viewpoint to her character, but her character feels that she needs to work off this debt that she has incurred um, by sinning in this way. And she really works herself to the ground and what she ends up doing isn't helpful for those around her. It's not good. And so I wish that she had known that she didn't need to work off her debt. I wish she had known that Jesus already paid the debt. Like that's already taken care of. She's forgiven. There's no shame anymore. So I wish she had had that freedom. Very enjoyable book. Um, some elements that made it not my favorite but still loved it. My number four, fourth favorite, uh, second least favorite of Elizabeth Gaskell's works is Sylvia's Lovers. I don't have a physical copy of Sylv Sylvia's Lovers. I read it on an ebook on an ebook from the library. This novel has a sweeping, dramatic setting. It's by the sea. Um, it's cold there quite for quite a number of months. It's a gorgeous setting full of um, sailors. I mean, they are, they are whalers, so that was a little bit like, ooh, they're going out there to kill all the whales. That kind of isn't great. That kind of sucks. But yeah, I love the setting. The characters are all really interesting. One character does something that is really maddening to me, and so that was a slight drawback for me. But overall, it's very romantic and beautiful and quite different from Elizabeth Gaskell's other works. This is the only historical fiction out of her five novels novels. So it was interesting um, to get that different perspective. She's not writing in her own time from her own experience. Now for the middle of the pack, the third favorite and the third least favorite is Mary Barton. Mary Barton is so good. It is the prototype for North and South, meaning Elizabeth Gaskell, this was her first published novel. She wrote it in 1848. And she, um, was writing about the plight of the masters and the workers in Manchester during the hungry 40s, the, hung the hungry 1840s, of course. So um, it was very controversial when it came out. She got a lot of criticism for the way that she um, treated the masters, the fact that she was coming from the perspective of the workers. Um, so when she rewrote this novel, it was North and South, of course, she did a couple of things. She came from the perspective of both the workers and the masters, and she further distanced it by setting it in Milton, which is Manchester, but she renamed it. So um, I still like this, this first version, though. The story is quite different in and of itself. The characters are quite different. Um, and something happens about halfway through the novel, which is like, what? It's crazy and it makes you just like have to zoom through the rest of it. Okay, now for my top two. I think most people wouldn't be surprised that these are the top two. You might 
be wondering though which one I put as number one because I know that some people like some people feel one way other people feel the other way it's not like there's always one that's the favorite for everybody so for me the second favorite is wives and daughters wives and daughters is a beautiful and quiet novel it is very different from all the others from Mary Barton especially um, but I love the characters. Molly is such a wonderful character. She, to me, she's a more likable version of Fanny Price from Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Um, I love, I love the, the relationships that develop. I mean, you've got great, um, you know, a mother-daughter relationship between Molly and Mrs. Hamley. You've got another great mother-daughter relationship between Molly and, um, Hyacinth, her stepmother, or Claire, as she's also called, or Mama, as Molly is forced to call her. Um, and, like, Hyacinth, Claire, whatever you want to call her, she's a great character. Mrs., Mrs. Gibson, she's a great character. She, um... She is so complex. I mean, she's a real person, basically. In some moments, you're just like, she's so maddening. She's so frustrating. But in other moments, you're like, oh, I think she's actually being genuine about this. I think this is, she does actually want to do good. I think a lot of her intentions are good. Same thing with Cynthia. We've got a great sister relationship between Molly and Cynthia. Um, it's just so good. The romance is really good. Um, even though the setting is mainly in the same area, it doesn't make me feel claustrophobic. It's, even though it's pretty thick, it's a pretty big one, it never feels too long or too slow. It's so good. It just explores it, everything so nicely. It gets into the nitty gritty, the details of things, and I really love that. Now, by process of elimination, if you know Elizabeth Gaskell's novels, then you will have figured out what is my favorite, which one is my favorite of her novels, and that is North and South. It is so good. I, this is how I first heard of Elizabeth Gaskell. I think I watched the miniseries, the 2004 miniseries with uh, Daniela Denby-Ash and um, Richard Armitage, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, so then I had to read the book, and the book is really good. Like, like the, the relationship between the masters and the workers, the cultural shock between the North and the South, the tension between Margaret and, and Mr. Thornton. I mean, it's just so good. I love Bessie. I love Higgins. I love her father, even though he's so flawed and, and, and like, he's just such a broken man. I love her mother. I love, um, you know, uh, I love Dixon, their maid, who sometimes I'm all the way, I'm on her side. I'm like, yes, Dixon. And other times I'm like, no, Dixon, why are you doing that? Like, it's really good. It's really good. If you haven't read, if you haven't read any Elizabeth Gaskell, I would recommend starting with this one with North and South. Um, if you have read her other works, read North and South. I, I would recommend North and South to everybody. It's so good. So that is my ranking of Elizabeth Gaskell's novels. They are wonderful and delightful. A lot like Jane Austen in some ways, but she's her own writer. Elizabeth Gaskell really is very realistic. She draws her characters so realistically, whereas Jane Austen is a little more caricature-like. Still realistic, but a little more caricature-like. So, um, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. So until next time, may you all be filled with peace, hope, love, and joy. So take care, everyone. Bye.